Good morning. Today we are going to continue our way through Permaculture, a designer's manual uh, by Bill Mollison. We are on chapter six and uh, we are discussing today something called a niche in time. This is all about cycles. So the cool thing is that here Mollison starts to slow down in the book and actually talk about some of the principles he's been listing ad nauseum for the last several chapters. So we're going to slow down and talk about niches in time and exactly what that means to Bill Mollison, some examples of niches in time, and also talk about the, the concept of niches uh, in, in, in general. So a niche, just by definition, a niche is uh, something uh, like a, a space or uh, area that you carve out as a, a place for something. So it could be like in a cabinet uh, where you have a special place for your photograph of your dad. Uh, it's um, each of these... You could consider each of these shelves as a, a niche, uh, which I'm filling with different things. There are also, though, niches in time. And this, these niches in time interact with space, so you, it's very difficult to talk about time without space, without objects. Um, but we're going to focus on the time element and see how that relates to some of these other things. So. A niche in time, if you think about an apartment building where people live and, and then leave and stop living there, um, they are occupying a niche in space, but they're also occupying a niche in time. That niche in time might be, say, 2018, June of 2018 to June of 2019. And so they've occupied that niche in space with respect to that niche in time. And many different people will live in that apartment over the years. They will live in that niche and they will occupy different niches in time, but they will occupy the same space. So this is where space and time kind of interact with respect to niches. Niches in time generally reflect something going on in a space. So niches, Mollison talks about niches with respect to cycles and the cycle of some sort of energy through a system. So that could be the cycle of nutrients uh, going through uh, a, an organism and then that cycle changes to a different cycle where you have those same nutrients going through another organism or collection of organisms. And then you have, once again, the same nutrients going through another. So the more cycles you can pass something through and the more niches in time and space, that that nutrient or some other energy occupies in your yard, the better off you're going to be. So if you can take advantage of those niches in that particular type of cycle, it is to your advantage. Um, another niche in, in, uh, in time can be, um, well, going back to like that apartment example, but now think about your garden. So you've got a raised bed and there are certain types of plants that will come to fruition in the spring, some that will come to fruition in the summer, some that will come to fruition in the fall. And if you can match up the prior, the, the, um, the growth patterns of these various plants so that they occupy different spaces in time, you can get multiple uh, harvests out of the same raised bed garden. 
So an example of how you could do this. So imagine you are growing garlic. You plant your garlic in the fall, perhaps, if you're where I am, and you cover it over with, uh, with mulch. In the spring, before too much starts to happen with the garlic, you scatter some lettuce seeds on top of the, um, of the mulch. It falls through the mulch and some of those will germinate. Now your lettuce uh, will be actually occupying a slightly different niche in time in that it will be harvested perhaps a little bit earlier than your garlic Perhaps it will continue to be harvested after your garlic is harvested. So then you think, maybe I could fit something else in here so that when the lettuce bolts, when it gets too hot in the summer, maybe there's something else that I can have going that will then give me food later in the season. You know, what if that were, for instance, potatoes? So you plant your potatoes in the spring right about the same time as your lettuce, and you create some sort of system for supporting those to potato plants so they don't sprawl too much all over your garlic, and you let those develop. Now, the interesting thing about those crops that I mentioned with the potatoes and the garlic, those are both going to require the disturbance of the soil when you harvest them. The garlic, not as much as the potatoes, but the potatoes you will really have to disturb your, your space. So you want to make sure that if you are planting these and thinking about niches in time, that the time that you disturb the soil the most, which is when you're harvesting your potatoes, is not going to cause any problems for your lettuce. But the lettuce will probably already be gone by by that time in the season. And, uh, and so by the time the, the fall rolls around, you're harvesting those potatoes, that lettuce that you planted in the spring, you probably won't uh, be getting much lettuce out of. But so these, this is an example of using niches in time. We've already talked about niches in space a whole lot, and that is uh, when you have different levels of, uh, of plants that are, um, are growing simultaneously, but taking advantage of different niches in space. But you can also work the time idea in there too. So I'm going to give another example, and this is an example of cycles. So I just talked very generally about nutrient cycling through a system. I'm gonna talk specifically about, uh, about nitrogen. Nitrogen is an element that is found everywhere. We are breathing it all the time. Anything that is growing, almost anything, I don't know if there's anything that grows that doesn't require nitrogen. It's, it's very important. It, it makes up part of our bodies uh, and it's, well, it's everywhere. However, it is not usable by every plant in its gaseous form, which is where it is it's most readily available. So you need special kinds of plants that absorb it and, uh, and generally by working with bacteria, uh, pull the nitrogen out of the air and bring them into the body of the plant. So what we have here is we have a the first of many cycles of nitrogen. So this plant pulls nitrogen out of the air uh, using bacteria, a, 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 a cooperation between the, the plant and the bacteria to, uh, to actually take that nitrogen and fix it and make it into something that the plant can use. So the plant then has a, a source of nitrogen. So this is only certain kinds of plants. This is quite often plants in the bean family, so legumes, uh, but there are, there are other types of plants also that can uh, fix nitrogen, and these are really handy to have. And what they do is they, they, like they, they pull this nitrogen through this bacteria into their, into their body, so now you have essentially a nitrogen factory there in your, in your bean plant. 
if you then let that uh, plant dry up on your trellis before you take it and work it back into the soil, effectively you have lost probably most of that nitrogen that was collected from the air. If, on the other hand, you take it and put it through another cycle while it's still green, then you have another use of that nitrogen. So let's say we take those uh, stems and you know other things, the, the, the vines that you're not going to do anything else with, and while they're still green, but they're nearing the end of that cycle, you take those and you hot compost them, or you take them and you find some way of uh, feeding them into a uh, uh, worm composting system, or you just work them right back into the garden right where they fall. Now you have taken that nitrogen and put it back into another system. So say we did the worm bin thing. Say we, we shredded this stuff and put it through our worm bin while it was still fresh. Okay. Now your worms take that nitrogen and they put it into the soil by eating it and, and now you've got worm castings that are rich in nitrogen. Okay, so now you've got another, another form of this stored energy, this nitrogen, that you can feed to some of your other plants. And so now you say you put this around, uh, you know, some lettuce or, or cabbage or uh, a, um, you know, collards or something like that. And you make sure you put it underneath a layer of mulch so that it actually gets into the soil or you liquefy it and you water it on around your plants. So now these plants and the microorganisms in the soil around them have this rich nitrogen rich substance that they can use again. So you've got another cycle. Gets pulled into, say, it gets pulled into your collards and you eat collard greens for dinner. So now you've got the nitrogen that originally came into the legume, was recycled through the worms, went back into the soil, went into your collards, and you have eaten those collards, now you've consumed the nitrogen. The nitrogen, nitrogen is in you. It's very likely that this nitrogen won't stay in you very long. It's going to pass through again. It's going to come out as urine. Now this is where we get into kind of socially uh, unacceptable uh, solutions, but some people take their urine and then they water it down and they feed it back into their gardens. And once again, you've got another cycle where this nitrogen can go through again. I saw that there was a, a beer conference where they were actually letting everybody pee into a, into a system that would collect the urine and would then turn it back into hops later for, um, for making more beer. And that's a sort of a closed loop system. So these, uh, these are opportunities. And each of these cycles is a niche in time where some organism is taking advantage of that nitrogen. Now you could have just let those, those uh, vines dry up the nitrogen would have been released back into the air when the bacteria died that, uh, that had been storing it and when the, the green turned to brown. But instead, you took it and you used it again and again and again and again and again. And this is, this is what recycling really should be, is recycling of resources within your own space. So when something comes in, if, it is, if it's a valuable element, if it's a valuable resource, you try and use that resource as many times in as many ways as possible. And that element passing through these time cycles can stay in your system and can benefit you many ways 
many times. It takes creativity, it takes patience, it takes um, lots and lots of observation to start taking advantage of these niches in time, in space, um, these nutrient and energy cycles in your space. Now it sounds like when I'm talking about energy cycles, I'm talking about something very mystical, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking just about the, 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 the metabolic processes, the, the, the processes of, um, of input and output that are constantly taking place in your garden, in your yard, and that is what these niches in time and niches in space are all about and how you can use them to your advantage in a gardening system. So this isn't mystical at all. This is actually very practical, but when people start talking about energy and cycles and things like that, it starts to seem that way. It's, it's not. It's very, very practical and very literal. These are biological systems that take advantage of resources in certain periods of time. And that's what we're talking about. So, so that is cycles and niches in time. Uh, Bill Mollison's chapter 2.6. Uh, and so I hope you enjoyed it today. We will keep moving on in the book, hopefully at a, a more reasonable pace than we have been early on with all those massive lists that Bill Mollison likes to throw at you. Now we're going to talk about these specific concepts and how they can be applied in your landscape. So thanks for joining me. I hope you give me a thumbs up. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and please take a look at foodforestgardenclub.org. That is where we are getting together and talking about things like this, but also just talking about seeds and plants and what we're doing this year and what we're excited about. The new plants we are trying, the ones that worked well, the ones that we weren't quite as impressed with, and just spending time with other gardeners, forming community. Uh, we've got some contests and some other things too. So look forward to hopefully seeing you there, but in the meantime, please let me know what you thought. Are there other ideas with respect to cycles and niches in time that, that I missed here and that you would like to discuss. All right, thank you so much. Have an awesome day.